Hey everybody, it's Austin Salomon and welcome to this week's episode of The Real Wausau Real Estate Show. Today we're talking about six tips for beating out other offers. With the spring market in, in swing and the market going crazy, there's a shortage of houses. It's very common for, for home uh, to have multiple offers on it. And I want to give you guys six tips to give you the best shot at getting the house. Um, so in a multiple offer situation, there's multiple people interested. What are six things that you can do to put yourself in the best position? First thing is make the offer clean. By this, you want to really limit your conditions to only what's most critical. Remember, the more conditions or the more contingencies that you put in the offer, the the, the less appealing that is to the seller. Um, and the less appealing it is. It makes sense. Obviously, if there's more things and more hassles and headaches and things to do in the offer, the seller's not going to like that. Um, <clears throat> on one side of the spectrum, a cleanest offer is a cash offer with no contingencies. And the the you know the more conditions you add from there um, would be less appealing. Uh, part of a clean offer is reasonable timelines as well. So you want to move click quickly when it comes to conducting inspections, dropping off the earnest money, and securing a loan. Um, so having tight time frames, which tell the seller that you're serious and things are going to be moving along quickly. Uh, and then a third part here of, of making the offer clean is drop any request for home warranties, seller closing costs, or anything that would take away from the net offer to the seller. Uh, step number two is to have a solid pre-approval letter. It's really more important now than ever to have a really solid letter um, from a lender and really go deep early on when it comes to securing a loan. Um, if you're working with a lender, you're going to have to go through the whole process anyway. If you can get like most of it knocked out as part of that pre-approval process and go really deep in credit, income, make sure everything looks really good. Um, then the lender is going to be able to express confidence in that letter. And also maybe they even be willing to, you know, give a phone call to the other agent on the listing agent or the agent on the other side to just express the confidence they have in you getting the loan. Um, with that as well, um, you know, one thing to talk about when you're talking about the pre-approval, one thing to, uh, to have a conversation with your lender about would be what type of loans work for you. Um, again, when we're in a multiple offer situation, you want to put the best, you want to put your best foot forward, which may mean that, you know, even if the a government loan, for example, is what's going to keep your payments the least, if you have multiple offers, maybe going a conventional route would be better because it's going to help you secure the house versus, you know, doing a government loan, which might be, you know, give you the best interest rate. But if it doesn't, if you don't get the house because you're doing a government loan and there's more involved in getting that loan, then obviously that's, that's a negative factor. So here you have to consider, Hey, even though I might, even though like for monthly payment wise, a government loan might be the best option for me because there's a multiple offer situation. Maybe I'm going to go conventional so that I have the best chance of locking the house down. Uh, tip number three, put a large amount of earnest money down. And the more money you put down, the more serious the seller can, you know, conveys that or will will convey um, your interest. So if you put down five hundred dollars of earnest money, um, which in a normal circumstance, you know, five hundred thousand, fifteen hundred would be normal. But in a multiple offer situation, if you put five thousand dollars down, that's obviously going to be show the seller that you're that you're really interested uh, to take that a level further. It's not super common around our area, but if you did a large amount of earnest money and then made that non-refundable after the home inspection period, that would be another way that, you know, you'd really have to, you know, you'd really show the seller that you're not, uh, you're very serious. You're very um, serious about closing. Um, number four is to put your best foot forward from the gate. When you're making an offer um, and there's multiple offers in, just go with your best price, your highest and best right from the gate. Uh, you want to put your best foot forward um, cause a lot of times, you know, a lot of times buyers will think that, you know, they might leave a little bit out there thinking that the seller would come back to them, but you don't want to wait for, you know, the seller to, um, you know, ask for your highest and best, or, you know, you can't assume that they're going to, you have to assume that they're not going to counter your offer. Um, so really just go in with your, your best foot forward to where if they don't accept it, Hey, at least, you know, that you put your best foot forward. 
Um, number five, escalation clause. Uh, this is a strategy where you can actually offer a range of values on a home. So for example, if the home is listed for sale at 150,000, you could offer 150,000 or blank amount more than the next best offer up to, for example, 160. So in this case, maybe you'd say, hey, I'll offer you 150 your list price, but I'll offer $2,000 more than the next best offer up to 160. So this can be really effective because, hey, you're not, let's say there's a couple offers in, but all of them are right at full price. Well, hey, you're not going for that 160 right off the gate. Um, so you're not overpaying for the house, but you're just nudging the other offers by, you know, whatever amount you set here with the example would be 2000. Now this works, but you have to have numbers one, two, three, four, and even number six here. Uh, those have to be in place in order for you to, to use this. Like if your offer is not very clean or you don't have a pre-approval letter, a lot of times it doesn't matter if your offer is 2000 more than the next best offer because you missed those points. Uh, and finally, number six, customize your offer to the seller. Really, this is all about, hey, put yourself in the seller's perspective. What's most important for them? What's on their mind? Um, so here, what you can do is consider like, well, what's the seller's time frame? What, is they, what are they looking to, what's important to them when it comes to uh, when they're moving out? Do they, they want to close right away? Do they want to close uh, further out? So kind of customizing it for them. If the seller wants to, uh, for example, take some personal items or they take the appliances, again, if you're in a multiple offer situation, just let them have those things. You kind of have to work with them, let them, you know, do what they want to do um, so that, again, it's appealing to them. Another thing, too, is in customizing the offer to the seller is, you know, writing a personal letter or making a personal connection, um, which can be effective as well. This is another piece, too, that, again, you know, numbers one through four have got to be important in order for uh, for you to, you know, a letter's not going to do much if you come in $5,000 less than the other offer. Um, so great. That covers the six tips for beating out other offers. If you guys have questions about these, would love to deep, you know, go deeper in and answer any questions. Otherwise, um, hopefully this works out for you and we'll, uh, catch you guys in the next show.